Okay, shalom everyone, and welcome to another Thursday night Isaiah study. And tonight we are looking at Isaiah 24, the last uh, seven verses or so, eight verses of Isaiah 24. So verse 17 to 23, whatever the difference there is. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, anyway, so uh, I titled the study tonight, Judgment Will Come Upon All the Earth Prior to the Glory of God Being Fully Revealed. Okay, and so uh, before we begin, let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time that we can study your word. We thank you, Lord, for your word that that we have uh, it here in Isaiah, Lord, that, that causes us to draw out all of these things that help us to think about our lives, Lord, and, and consider our relationship with you, Lord. I pray that tonight as we study your word that you would help us to apply these truths to our lives to bring glory to your name and, and to your son, Yeshua. Lord, we, we pray all these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Okay, so we're, we're looking at the remainder of chapter 24. And it, it concludes with a description of the judgment that will come upon all of the earth, you know, prior to the glory of God coming. And uh, let me go to the first slide here. Oh, I forgot to uh, give an advertisement. <laughs> okay, so uh, you can find all of these teachings and, and you can actually directly communicate with me on Telegram, okay, and we have other great teachers, um, Ro, uh, uh, Richard and Rabbi Jeremiah, and um, their teachings, their ministries, you can see right here on the slides. Like for example, uh, Rabbi Jeremiah, he teaches on the Apocalypse, you know, the the Greek rendition of the Book of Revelation, and he connects the the Greek to the ancient Hebrew and the Septuagint, and then is drawing out the meaning of the text, you know, so we can understand it in a in a in a very unique way, right? And and then uh, Roe Richard, in his ministry, he gives the Shabbat services during uh, on the Shabbat. So uh, his great teachings, great teacher, you know. And and so uh, come come to Telegram and and ask about the Hebrew courses and the Greek courses that we have there. Okay. And so um, now <laughs> now we're looking at Isaiah chapter twenty four. Okay. So <clears throat> I'll start over here. We're looking at the remainder of chapter 24, and it concludes with this description of the judgment of the world that will come upon the world and upon the earth, you know, prior to the glory of God being fully seen, right? And in this last section of Isaiah, he's trying to provide a picture of why it's not wise to rely upon this world, this world for joy and happiness and the essential things of life. You know, the, we we are we are not to make the things of this world, our lives, all about the this right, all about these the things of the world. And the impression that's given is that of a world that has completely gone crazy in sin and rebellion. And if we look around today, just look at the television, we see this everywhere. And because of the world's sinfulness, the Lord God Almighty Himself is involved in causing this confusion and the lack of understanding, okay? And, and Isaiah says this, you know, we find this in Romans chapter 1, 2. Paul talks about this hundreds of years later, right? We see what's going on even today, the confusion that, that's, that, that's prevalent in our culture, right, and around the world. And so we, here in Isaiah, the Lord himself is involved in causing confusion and the lack of understanding in those who reject him in his holy ways. And this means that God gives one what he wants, right? He gives a person what he wants. If a person wants lies, if he wants deception, if he wants conspiracy theories, the Lord is going to give this person into these things, to allow these things um, to, to be a part of his life, you know, a person's life, unless one is actively seeking the Lord God to not be deceived. You know, this is one of the, one of the key things that we really need to be in the word of God so that we are not deceived today, especially in this time that we live. You know, when we set our focus upon the Lord and upon his holy word, this is the only way to stand secure and on solid ground and not be deceived by every wind of doctrine. Okay, and we're, Paul talked about this. He said this to Ephesians, to the Ephesians, right? In Ephesians chapter four, verse 14. So these things reveal to us that in the end, 
It's the Lord God Almighty who reigns. And most importantly, he is to reign in our lives, right? And the point is that all kingdoms, all peoples, there, um, there are none that are eternal, right? Only God is eternal. Only the Lord God Almighty is eternal. And all things in this world are fleeting in glory and outside of the Lord, right? The God, God's glory is everlasting, right? And this is the point of the sequence of chapters, of chapter in Isaiah, chapter 13 to chapter 23, to demonstrate for us how our trust in God is the one sure thing in life, right? That is the one sure thing in life that we have. Now, Solomon, he wrote in his proverb, he said, in, according to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, and, and he said, Batach el Adonai bekol levavacha. Okay, and trust in the Lord God in all your, with all your heart. And the el binatacha el tishayan. Okay, and do not lean on your own understanding. And, and I thought it was interesting. I kind of highlighted levavacha because uh, in the Greek, in the Septuagint, it uses the word cardia which means heart. And in the Telegram channel, um, Rabbi Jeremiah and I always go back and forth over this definition of lev. Is it heart or is it mind? You know, and most of the time it, it translates as mind, as the mind. And, but here it's interesting that, the, that uh, the Septuagint translated it into cardia, right? And as meaning the heart, right? The seat of our emotions, which is the motivation behind the things that we do, right? And so the idea is that we are to trust in the Lord with all of that, right? Of our, of our mind and our heart, and then do not lean upon our own understanding. This is why we always lean upon the Word of God. We always look through, we read the, the Word of God all year long, right? And every day, right? And we trust in God, right? That, that's who we are as God's people. Now, we always have great discussions in the telegram room. You know, come to the telegram room and, and join us for our discussions. And so now we note here that the Septuagint translates the verse. It says, trust the Lord God with all of your heart and do not be exalted in your own wisdom. Okay. And in this, this phrase, um, let's see here. Um, okay. So this phrase, Epitheo, epide, uh, se, salfi, and um, we we'll go on and in, um, main epiro, ep, Okay, so uh, and that, that that's referring to this uh, the taking up this 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 uh, epi epiro is the taking up or the raising up, or the lifting up. And this maps to the Hebrew word uh, right here, tisha, tisha, okay? And that, that is to uh, support oneself, or to lie, support, or make comfortable, or depend upon, okay? And that, that's what the, the Hebrew word, so this this Greek maps maps to, to this Hebrew word here. And the Septuagint describes the effect of pride to knowledge, you know, this, this idea of do not exalt, do not be exalted with your wisdom, right? And so the Septuagint is drawing out this, this thing about pride in knowledge, pride in what we know, right? And this particular point demonstrates the mentality of the conspiracy theorist, theorist right? You know, like the flat earthers. <laughs> and the text from Proverbs in the context of Isaiah, provides us with a description of the life of those who are faithful, right? That we remain humble unto the Lord and, and before men, right? And we trust in God and his word. And the question is, are we going to trust in God with all of our heart, or are we going to lean on our own understanding? You know, I, that, that's, that's a good question. It's something we should ask ourselves this every day. Now, Isaiah describes these things in the following way. He says, uh, he says here, according to Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2, okay, and chapters uh, 26, verse 3. And so, uh, okay, so he says the following, 
He says, Kine el Yeshuati avtach or evtach velo efchad ki azi vezimrat ya Adonai um the the Yehi Li Lishua Li Yeshua right okay so um and that that that's uh, behold God is my salvation right behold God is my salvation and um I will trust I will trust and not be afraid right and not, and not be afraid not pachad right and and then for the Lord Hashem right the name is my strength and my song and he has also become my salvation here again okay and so it's, it's always interesting reading the hebrew bible we see yeshua everywhere everywhere right here look yeshua he's right here and yeshua he's right here right the salvation of god we see him everywhere at least i do and and so uh isaiah chapter 12 verse 2 and then we look at chapter 26 verse 3 and and it, it says it says uh yetzer samuch titzor shalom shalom ki vecha batuach okay and so you shall keep in him in perfect peace shalom shalom right in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he has trusted in you okay so Isaiah acknowledges that God is his salvation and how he trusts in him and he is not afraid. So when we trust in the Lord, we find strength because he is dwelling in our midst, right? And he help he is he he set we he sets our minds free from deception, you know, if we're honestly seeking help for this. Okay, and it's, the deception is huge. You know, when I was writing this, I was there were there were so many things that were coming up in my life and speaking to other people and 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 whatnot on this topic of deception, right? And conspiracy, right? And so uh, deception is big, and and we need to seek the Lord and be honest about that. If we are honest, that He and He will set our set us free, set our minds free from this. And when when we trust in the Lord. He rescues us from our troubles, not just spiritually, but also physically as well. I believe God is able to do anything. You know, we are overcomers because of the presence of God in our lives. This Torah-centric principle, right? And how do we become overcomers? Well, what does Isaiah say? He says, he says to trust in the Lord and seek the Lord God in, in truth and righteousness through his holy word and it in its application to our lives right god's word is true in the pages of the scriptures we have the wisdom of god right and the promises of his love and his faithfulness to us so if we regularly meditate meditate upon these truths that are in the scriptures we will lean upon the lord for help and not lean upon our own understanding like like solomon is warning us from you know in this in this we will truly find peace and joy the joy of the lord you know something that's very interesting is what paul wrote to the ephesians and we look in ephesians chapter 3 verses 18 and 19. so i, I got the text here ephesians 3 18 to 19. and <clears throat> here it, what I thought was interesting is that and let me read the king james first it says may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth of and height and to know the love of christ which passes on knowledge that you may might be filled with all the fullness of god okay and so uh this this first part from the the hebrew translation it says kach tuchlu lahavin yachad im kol Hakadoshim, hak, hak okay? So that is, that that says that we may be able, you know, tuchlu, tuch be able um, to vein, right? To to understand. And it says, yachad, together, okay? Together with all of the holy ones, right? Hakadoshim, right? With all of the holy ones. And so with this statement, what this statement means is that it suggests that we're to 
learn together from the Word of God. We can't be islands unto ourselves. We have to, we have to, um, as iron sharpens iron, right? You know, we have to uh, discuss. We have to argue over the Word, right? We have to, we have to just um, dwell in it, right? And and that's one of the reasons why we started the Telegram channel. You know, that we can come and we can talk about Scripture and and anything, right? That's related, and. So uh, the idea here that Paul is trying to give is that we do these things together. We are not to be islands. You know, this means that it's not about, our faith is not about individualism. You know, this is about community, right? And discussing the scriptures of how to apply God's word to our lives. How do I do that, right? And so we look at this, this verse and it goes on and it says, it says, Ma uh, horochav. Veharech, vehagova, um, veha omek. Okay, so what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, right? Okay, so we're looking at a a three dimensional thing here, right? We're looking at the a volume. This suggests that the what does it say? Comprehension of God of who He is or or of these truths is is voluminous right and it suggests that this takes effort to even comprehend how much the messiah loves us right and the reason this is so important for us is because what it says here it because it says uh leman timal timaleu beho melo elohim okay so for the reason of, you know, Lama'an, for the reason of being filled with all the fullness of God, okay? And so that that is the, the reason this is so important, the understanding of God's Word. Why is this important? It's so that we can be filled with God's fullness, right? We note how the knowledge of God's love is for us, causes us to be complete in our relationship, to trust in Him, you know, from the sense of being filled with the fullness, with his fullness, right? And th again, this agrees with the Greek text that says that you might be filled with the fullness of God, okay? And it says, you know, that of course, you know, the Hebrew text is translated from the Greek text. But we know how this helps us to be filled is is to be filled with faith, right? The faith of God and his Messiah, knowing that God's love for us surpasses all human knowledge. His love is so vast that he must reveal to us, like it says here, the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, right? Right here, the breadth and the depth and the length and the height. And of Messiah's love, right? And just so, the, and he does this so that we can comprehend it, right? And, and this elicits unconditional trust in the Lord, you know, and it's because of God's infinite love that we can trust in him. You know, he is forever faithful. You know, even when we aren't, he is forever faithful. And it's because of God's infinite love that we trust in, in his faithfulness, we trust in him. And we are, when we are going through difficult times, it can be difficult sometimes to see the love of God. And here is where we need to trust him. Here's where we need to do what Isaiah is saying here and what, what, what Solomon is saying here in, in the Proverbs, that we are to trust in him, right? And that not lean on our understanding you know this means that whether we have health problems or we have financial challenges or we or peer pressure or or whatever it doesn't matter what it is we can trust in god we can trust in the lord we can trust in his messiah yeshua because of what god's word says about who they are right we we can we can know their character and the character is that of love and caring right and and do anything they can he, the lord can do anything and so the point is that we are to keep our eyes upon the lord god almighty our father in heaven and upon his son yeshua you know and, and what isaiah is telling us here at the end of isaiah 24 is that we are to keep our focus we are to keep our eyes upon the one who is sovereign the one who is wise the one who is loving right we do this by seeking him as opposed to seeking help in ourselves 
or in the world. Because as we will see, that the world can't help us. It's like a drunkard, right? And we need the Lord. We need the rock of God's salvation, the solid foundation of his word, his holy word here in, in his Messiah, Yeshua. Okay.